Hello everyone and welcome to another Fusion 360 Tech Thursday. Uh, my name is Brad Tallis from Autodesk. Wanted to welcome you and I also have a uh, guest helper this time. Um, actually my boss is helping me answer the Q&A uh, today so make sure you only say really nice things. Um, anyways, we are going to be talking about in-context design. So what is that? Well, basically what it is, is using existing models to help you design the other models in your design. So for example, I have this belt tightener assembly and we're actually going to create um, this frame and this bracket in today's session. And you'll notice that this bracket fits perfectly inside of this frame and we're actually going to use information from the frame to help us design that bracket part. Now, I actually grabbed this um, from an old drafting book I got from one of my teachers way back in college. So here's the, here's the drawing that I'm using. Um, I've also included the drawing in the description of um, this live stream. So feel free to go ahead and, and grab that and try and create these parts uh, after the live stream. So like I mentioned, we're going to go through and learn how to create uh, two of these parts. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, this is the drawing that I was talking about. Um, looks like I've made some changes. Uh, so you'll see, for example, here's the full assembly. Um, on the next sheet, where I have an exploded view. And this is a multi-part series. So we're going to learn how to create um, part number one and part number two today. And then in future series, uh, we're going to go ahead and learn how to create the rest of these parts and then I'll even show how to create this exploded drawing. Um, on sheet three is the um, frame, sorry I was looking for the name, and on sheet four we have the um, bracket. And You'll actually notice there's not very many dimensions on the bracket and like I said we're gonna use a lot of the material from the frame to help us design our part. So this is the drawing I'm referencing, um, and like I mentioned, it is available in the description of this live stream. Okay, so I'm gonna start a new design, and this drawing is in inches, so I'm gonna take a look at my uh, document settings and confirm that I'm in inches, which I am. And then the very first thing I'm gonna do is to create a new component. And I've mentioned in other live streams, I personally like to create everything in components because it just helps organize things so much easier. So I can give it a name. We'll call this one frame. I'll say OK. And we can see that we now have a new component called frame. I'm going to start by creating a sketch. And in this case, I'm going to basically draw from the side view because this part is pretty symmetric and I want to keep that symmetry. So I'm going to draw from the side view. And, and the reason I'm doing the side is because I'm going to start with the basic circles that kind of define um, the pivot points of this frame. So I'm just going to start by throwing a uh, circle on here and I'm, I clicked at the zero zero point and it's asking for a diameter and in this case it's one and a quarter um, so I could type in 1.25 or check this out I can actually type in one and one quarter and it'll actually figure out the fraction for me and this is pretty important because on this drawing there's quite a few fractions like 330 seconds and 3 sixteenths and stuff. So my first tip of this uh, live stream is that you can actually type in fractions. So one and a quarter. Okay, so that's the bottom circle. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the top circle. Now, how I'm showing, how I'm doing this, there's probably multiple different ways of doing this. Uh, I wanted to show some tips and tricks that I personally do, and I'm not saying this is the right way or the only way to do it. But this is what I do to help me make sure that I'm creating these parts as correct as possible. So one of the first things I do is I want to have a circle that's perfectly in line or straight above this 
I purposely over exaggerate and put it off to the side and you'll see why here in just a moment so this is 1 and 7 8 so I'm gonna type in 1 and then a space and then 7 slash 8 and I'll go ahead and hit enter now you'll notice that this circle is blue which means it's not fully constrained now the reason I put it off to the side is because I want to force it I want to make sure that it's perfectly in line with this other circle and if I had just drawn a circle that was pretty close like right here and drawn a circle that looks perfectly centered but if we were to zoom up on that we can obviously see that it's off a little bit okay so but that's kind of hard to see when you're zoomed out right there it looks pretty good so this is why I kind of over exaggerate the mistake and then I can come in and say I want that point and that point to be vertical with each other and I physically see it kind of snap into place so that's one of my my tips that I um, usually use and that I teach in my classes um, I also want to define how far away these circles are from each other so I'm gonna use my dimension tool now I have it up in my toolbar but you could also use the D key D for dimension and these circles are five and a half away from each other so you can see when I typed in that dimension that this circle is now black which means that it's fully constrained okay and I'm actually gonna stop there I'm gonna go ahead and finish my sketch and I'm going to extrude this bottom circle now the reason I'm not going to do both at the same time is because according to the drawing they're actually different lengths or widths depending on uh, which term you want to use so I'm going to do one at a time and again one of my tips that I always use is I pre-select my profile I right mouse click and it shows me the commands that make sense in this case I could extrude that profile I could create an offset plane or I could even edit the sketch so in this case I obviously want to extrude and another tip that I like to use is when you're extruding don't be looking straight on at it it's kinda hard to see which direction it's going so I tend to rotate a little bit isometric so I'm kinda looking at it at an angle I'm gonna go ahead and start to drag a distance okay like I mentioned this is a very symmetric part so I'm actually gonna change the direction from one side to symmetric and what that's gonna do is it's gonna extrude equal distances in both directions you'll notice when I did that it gave me this measurement option and one of them is half length and the other one is whole length so what this is basically saying is this is gonna go about 3.3 .3 in one direction and 3.3 .3 in the other direction for a total of like 6.6 .6. well I want to do the whole length and the whole length that this needs to go is four and a quarter so 4.25 or I could type in four and a quarter so now from this back edge to this front edge is four and a quarter inches long because I used that whole length option okay when I hit the OK button you're gonna see that my circles went away and I wanted to extrude that top circle well all it did is under my sketches folder you'll notice that the light bulb next to my sketch is turned off I'll just go ahead and click on it to turn it back on and now we can see that sketch and again another reason I like to use components is you can see how well organized this is so underneath that component is its own origin it's the body and the sketches that have to do with this particular frame component okay so I'm gonna do the exact same thing again I'm gonna say extrude I'm gonna start to drag we'll say symmetric we'll do the whole length and this length is a little bit larger instead of four and a quarter it's four and three quarters so I could type in 4.75 or I could type in four and three quarters and say okay now watch what happens I'm gonna expand open my bodies folder and you'll notice right now I have one body which happens to be this one as soon as I say okay 
you'll see that we now have two separate bodies. And that's because they're not intersecting with each other. So body two is the second one I created and body one is the first one that we created. Now, as we go through this drawing, so basically we started with this cylinder up here and this cylinder down here. And we're gonna start joining these parts together, okay? So the next thing I want to do is basically create this open air space between these cylinders. And so we can see that they're two and three quarters wide. And that's both at the top and at the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to do that next. I'm going to turn off that first sketch. I'll say, let's create a new sketch. And because I, I'm keeping everything symmetric, you'll notice that it's equal distance to the left, equal distance to the right, and it's basically on this front plane. So I'm gonna draw on this front plane, and let's just draw a basic rectangle. I don't care about what size it is, just something like that. Now, according to the drawing, it's one inch, or this area here is about one inch wide, so I'm gonna throw a dimension from here to this edge, and you'll notice it's snapping to that edge. I can place my dimension and I'm going to type in one and watch what happens to the rectangle. You can see how it moves over a little bit to make sure that that's one inch. I need to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to throw a dimension here to here and we can see that this one's 0 0.7019. Well, I also want it to be one inch so I could type in one, but here's another tip. I want it to be the same as this dimension over here. So while this is highlighted blue, I can just click on this existing dimension and you'll see D8. And basically what that's doing is it's referencing that dimension. And as soon as I hit enter, we'll see this little formula, Fx is one. And if I were to come in and change this to you know one and a half, that has to change to one and a half. So it's a great way to basically type in your dimension once and then have other dimensions reference that. Okay, so I'll finish my sketch. We'll go ahead and extrude this. And again, I'm going to pull in one direction, but I want it to go both. So I'll just say symmetric. And you can see as I'm pulling this profile, it's cutting through both of those parts. And all I have to do is just go far enough, like so. I'm just wanting to remove that general area. So I'll go ahead and say OK. But notice what happened to my bodies folder now. I have four separate bodies, which kind of makes sense. They're not intersecting with each other or interfering with each other. So there are four separate bodies. OK, so let's take a look at the drawing. We've basically created, you know, these four circular areas. The next thing I want to do is to create this, this beam or whatever you want to call it that goes from the top to the bottom and you'll notice that it's actually tapered and that's because of the different size circles. So I'm going to show you a cool command called loft. That's how we're going to go ahead and create this. So I want to basically create a sketch on the center of this cylinder. Well, if I turn on my origin, we can see that the origin is way down here. I could do an offset plane a certain distance, but let me show you a cool tip. Under the construct menu, you'll see that we have a bunch of different types of construction planes, construction axes, and construction points. Well, I want to put a plane that's horizontal through the center of the cylinder. But if I do this little pull down, you'll see that there isn't really, I mean, there's a tangent plane, but that would be on the edge. I want it to go through the center. So what I'm gonna do is actually create an axis through a cylinder. It's asking for the face. I'll just go ahead and click on this um, circular face and you'll see this little blue line appear that's going through the center of that cylinder. And I'll just say, okay. And we now have an axis that's going through the center of that particular component. Now check this out. I can actually say plane at an angle. 
I want to specify where that plane is. And notice even the little tooltip says creates a construction plane through an edge or through an axis or through a line. So I'm going to say plane at an angle and it's asking what's the line. I'm going to go ahead and click on this axis and you'll see that it's putting this construction plane. And I can put that plane at any angle I want. You can kind of see it rotating around that axis. Okay. Well, in this case, I obviously want it to be horizontal. I'm going to leave it at zero and say OK. And I now have a plane that slices right through the center of that cylinder. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off these two parts that I don't need to see right now. I just want to kind of focus on these. In fact, I might even turn off this little one at the bottom for now. So I'm just going to worry about this guy. And I'm going to say create a sketch. Okay. I'm going to show um, a couple tips here. If I do my line command and I get near the edge, you'll notice that it's not snapping to the edge of the cylinder. And that's because there's physically no geometry. <laughs> if I turn off the part, you'll notice there's no geometry there for it to snap to. Well, I want to basically grab the information from this part. So while I'm in sketch, I can use the project command. Or the shortcut is P for project. Now, in the project command, there's actually two options. And I'm going to show the difference between the two. So you can see specified entities or the whole body. So what specified entities does is it allows you to basically click, for example, this edge or this edge, for example. I want to specify the, the specific edge that I want to select, OK? Or the specific face I want to select. So I'm going to click on that face and say OK. And if I were to turn off the body, notice what it did. It projected the two edges of that cylinder, but you don't see a line going across the top or the bottom. And that's because there really isn't an edge on a circular face. OK? So I'm going to undo that. Let's go ahead and undo that project. And I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'll say project. But this time I'm going to change it to bodies. And I just have to get near the body. You'll notice it's not letting me select edges, for example. It's going to project the whole body. And when I say OK and turn that off, you'll notice in this case it kind of did like a silhouette projection where it did create lines all the way around. And that's what I want in this case. So I, I want to be able to grab on this edge here. Now notice like when I get with the line command, it's going to snap to that corner. It's going to snap to this edge. And it will even snap to this edge. And even find, for example, the center of that edge. So there might be situations where when you want to grab information from an existing model, you'll have to project that information onto your sketch and then you can use that information to create your sketch. And that's what we did here. OK, so I've projected that. I now want to use the ellipse command, because I want to create a half inch wide ellipse. Once again, I'm going to purposely uh, over exaggerate and kind of go off to, away from where it needs to be. So I'm going to click the center point and then the end point. And then I'm going to start to define the width. And so you can kind of see now it's, it's asking for the width of this ellipse. So according to the drawing, it's 0.5. And I'll say OK. Now, obviously, I'm way off. But I did that on purpose. Okay. Now I can come in and say, I want that point to be coincident with this line. So I'm going to click on that point. I'll click on that line, and you'll see how that point is now coincident with that line. I'll do the same thing here. That point, that line, and you can see it still kept my 0.5 wide dimension, but now I know for a fact that this ellipse is exactly touching those two edges. 
Now it's still blue because it's not fully constrained. So the last thing I'm going to do is throw a dimension. Let's just go from there to this edge. And that, according to the drawing, is 0.125. We'll see that that um, ellipse kind of slid over. The points are still coincident on those edges. And it is now fully constrained, which is good. I'm done with that. So I'm going to say finish sketch and you can kind of see what we did. We we drew an ellipse that's the exact width of this cylinder and it's a certain distance from the edge. So now all I have to do is kind of do the same thing down here um, on this bottom part. So let's go ahead and turn those guys off. Now in this case I actually don't have to create um, an axis because we we actually created that circle right in the center, so it already has an axis and it already has a plane. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sketch on that plane and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. P for project. I'll make sure that my bodies option is selected and I'm just gonna go ahead and project that body. We can see sure enough, it's a full rectangle. And then I'll come in and create the ellipse. Once again, kind of off here in space a little bit, making sure that's, uh, oops, 0.5 wide. I'll do the uh, coincident constraints, like so. And then finally, I'll throw my dimension on here to this edge. And let's just make that the 0.125 like we did before. Finish my sketch. Okay, let's turn those bodies back on and let's turn those two sketches back on. So now I have a longer ellipse at the top and a little shorter ellipse at the bottom and I wanna connect the two. So we're gonna use the loft command. And you can kinda of see by the thumbnail, it basically goes from one shape to another. Where sweep kinda of takes a profile and goes along a path Loft is like how you would do like an airplane wing where it's you know wide at the uh, fuselage but kind of narrow at the tip of the wing. That's You would use the loft command for that. So I'm going to say loft. What's the profile? Well, that's one profile. And this is the other profile. Now notice what happens. When I do that, it kind of turns red and it looks like it's kind of cutting some stuff away. And in fact, it is. You can see the operation is set to cut. Well, instead of cutting the material, I want to say join. And now you can see that it's taking that shape and going down to that shape and it's going to join together. I'll go ahead and say OK. And we now have this really cool looking kind of tapered face that goes from the top and it's tangent, right, down to the bottom. OK. I'm going to turn these other bodies back on. Now, that was a lot of work. I mean, it, it wasn't really, but a lot of talking. I want to put this over here. Instead of recreating it, let's just come in and say mirror. What do we want to mirror? Well, by default, I think it's usually set to faces. I would come in here and change it to features and say, I want to mirror that loft that we just did. What's the mirror plane? Well, when I click on select, it brings up my origin right there and I can click on that plane because you can kind of imagine like placing a mirror in that direction, you would see the reflection on the other side. And so that's what it's showing there. And as soon as I say, okay, we've now mirrored that other arm to the other side. Okay, we've actually got kind of the complicated part done. The, uh, the next thing to do on this part is to, I'm going to go ahead and update this, um, is to create this kind of this I-beam looking shape. Um, I just hit update, so it's updating the drawing. Um, this I-beam shape right here. And it's one inch up from the center of this hole. And then all of the other dimensions that I'm using are taken from the section BB right here. Okay. So I'm going to create a new sketch and I want to kind of draw the eye shape of it. So I'm going to select this 
plane that goes kind of through the middle of it like so. Okay, here's another couple tips I'm going to share with you. We want to draw that I-beam shape, but you'll notice that these lines are tapered. So it's not a perfect I-beam shape. It's kind of a tapered I-beam. So I want to use information from this, these legs. So I'm going to come in here and project those legs. So I'm going to say project. I'll do the body. We'll click on that guy, say OK. And if I were to turn off all the bodies, you can see how it projected that geometry. Okay, so let's start building the I-beam. I'm just going to draw a line somewhere across. Okay, now here's one of the tips that I'm going to share with you. If I go ahead and place that line, you'll notice that, you know, it's out here in space. And I would have to come in and trim these and to trim back to this edge right here. So instead of going out in space like that, I'm going to say line. And all I have to do is get near this edge. And I'm going to go ahead and click. You can kind of see how there's a little X right there. So I'm going to go ahead and click. I'll make sure I'm horizontal. You can kind of see, let me zoom up here. It kind of snap into place. So it's snapping to the geometry, to this sketch geometry. So you can see those two black dots are on that edge. Now here's what's really cool about this. I'm going to throw a dimension on here. So let's go from that edge to the center of the circle. And that's supposed to be one inch. Now watch what happens to those black dots. They actually follow the taper of this arm. And that's because they know that they're supposed to stay coincident to that edge. So it doesn't matter if I came in and said make this uh, four inches, you'll see how that line is wide way up there compared to one inch down here. So I personally like to click on the edges and have them catch like that. So I'll do another one up here somewhere. I'll go something like this, making sure. Um, and then I'm going to do a line down through the center. And so you can kind of see I, I started to create the basic shape of this. Now, somebody might ask, well, couldn't you have just offset this original line to go up here? Well, let me show you what would happen if we had. So I'm going to say offset. I'll click on that edge and I'm going to start to drag up. And again, I'm over exaggerating, but notice what's happening here. It doesn't know that it's supposed to stay coincident with that edge. You're basically taking a certain length edge and offsetting it a certain distance. So that's why I didn't use the offset to create that particular line. Okay. Now, I am going to use offset to create the rest of this to show you how would you work around that issue. So for example, I'll say offset. I'll click on this line and tell it I want to go in this direction, which in this case is in the negative direction. Well, I want it to go um, 3 sixteenths of an inch. So I could say minus 3 divided by 16, and you can see that it's actually going to figure that out for me. I'll go ahead and hit enter. But if I zoom up, we can see that particular issue. Well, there's a really cool command under modify called trim or extend. Trim is if the line's too long, you want to trim it back. Extend, all I have to do is get near the line. And it's kind of hard to see, but you'll see a little red line appear. And now it's extended over. Okay. And I could do that there also. And it's extended to that edge. So you just have to kind of be aware of that. Um, now what would happen if I didn't do that is it wouldn't think it's a closed profile. So let's just go ahead and do the 3 16ths there. And in this case, you'll notice that the line is too long. So I could come in and say trim. All I have to do is get near that little segment. It'll trim back. Get near that little segment and it'll, oops, I should zoom it up a little bit more. Let me zoom up. Hit trim and I'll click on that little segment right there. Okay. Now the last thing I want to do is to create my offset from the middle. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click on that guy. And it's going to be a total of 3 16 wide. And let's say I'm really bad at fractions. I want to go half of 3 16 So I could type in left parenthesis and do 3 slash 16 right parenthesis. And you can see it gives me a quick preview of what that's going to look like. And it's basically solving for 3 16 But now if I say divided by 2, you'll see that it came back a little bit. Now, why did I put it in parentheses? Well, because it's kind of mathematical operations. We need to solve that first and then divide it in half. Otherwise, it would be like 3 divided by 16 divided by 2. And what's the answer to that, right? So in some cases, you might have to throw the operator in some parentheses like so. Okay, and I'll do the exact same thing. I'll grab this guy and move it in this direction, but we can see that's in the minus direction. So I'm going to say um, left parenthesis minus 3 sixteenths divided by 2. And you can see how it kind of snaps back in place. So now we can kind of see our I-beam shape. And the last tip I want to show here is if I were, let me just turn off the bodies, you'll notice that this is broken down into a whole bunch of little areas, okay? When I go to extrude, I'm actually gonna have to select all of these areas to extrude, okay? Well, this middle line right here, I don't need it to be an object line, so I'm gonna select it and click on construction, and you'll see how it's now a dashed line and now, instead of being split into two rectangles, it's not an object line anymore. So it actually allows me to select way less areas to extrude. So I'll select those and say extrude. I'll turn my bodies back on so you can see what's going on here. I'll start to drag. And again, I want it to go symmetric. So I'll come in here and say symmetric. Now, how far do I need to go? Well, I really don't know the answer to that. I don't know what the distance is, so I'm gonna change that from distance to all. Now, when I do that, you can see that it's gonna extrude all the way through, and it thinks, oh, you're wanting to cut geometry away. No, I want to join it together. So I'm gonna just change from cut to join, and we can see how it's gonna take that I-beam and extrude it to these tapered shaped arms. What I'm hoping you're seeing here is we're keeping our sketches pretty simple. I'm not doing lots of fillets and all that kind of stuff. It's circles and ellipses and rectangles so far. And we're extruding to faces, we're extruding to objects, etc. Now we're going to start finishing the design of this guy, okay? All of these parts are touching, but you'll notice I have three separate bodies. I have that guy, and then I have this small cylinder down here, and then I have this large cylinder up here. Well, you know, remember they were separate bodies? Well, they still are, and I want them to be all one body. Under the modify command, I can come in here and say combine. I want to combine these bodies together. So I'm going to say combine. What's the target? Basically, it's asking, what are we combining to? So I'm going to say that's my target. And then what tools are we combining with? So we're going to say that one and that one. Now watch what happens when I say OK. We are now back to one singular body under this component. So the key thing here is you can have multiple bodies and simplify your design using multiple bodies and then combine them together once you've got more of your design, kind of like how we now have all of these arms together. Okay. Um, again, if you have any questions or comments, um, throw them out in the chat. Um, Jamie's out there helping me out. So uh, thumbs up if you're learning anything. Uh, you know, other tips and tricks that you want to see, just let me know in the comments and I'll try and show those. Okay, let's take a look at the drawing. Now, 
um, and I haven't had a chance to look through the chat, I'm, I'm guessing some of you were like, well, how come you didn't extrude the holes through at the same time that you made these cylinders? And I very well could have. Oops, wrong button. Um, but what I wanted to do here is show you a really cool trick. Now you'll notice my axis is still showing up. That's under my construction menu right here. And I can just hit that little light bulb to turn it off or turn it on. So these planes and axes, I can just turn those off using that little light bulb. Okay, so I didn't draw a hole here originally because I wanted to show the hole command. And there's a really neat tip with this that I use all the time. So I'm gonna say hole and it's gonna ask for a placement, which face. Again, I purposely click away from where it needs to be. So I'm gonna click up here and you can kind of see that it put that circle right there. I'm gonna zoom up here and you'll notice this little blue crosshair dot thing in the center of that circle. Well, I'm gonna to start to drag it and move it out of the way and you'll notice a little um, dot right in the middle of this circular face. So all I have to do is get near that circle and you can kind of see it snap right to the center of the cylindrical face. According to the drawing, this hole is 7 8 ream. So I'm going to type in 7 divided by 8 and you can see right here it's showing that's the diameter of the shaft. Now if I look at it from the side we can see that it's not going all the way through. So I could drag this arrow until we went far enough or I could just click on this face and you'll see it snap the correct distance. So I don't have to type in any dimensions. I'm saying drill through to that face. Now there's lots of options in here. I'm doing a simple hole. We could do counterboard hold, countersink holes. Um, but then you also notice flat and angle. So it's, oh, let me go to the side. If this was, you know, um, a blind hole where it didn't go all the way through, you would have a point at the end, right? In fact, if I drag this back a little bit, you can kind of see how it doesn't go all the way through. So I'd have to make sure that I'm going all the way through in that case, or I'm just going to change it to flat. Okay, and I'll say okay and it will create that hole for me. Okay. Now one thing I'm really bad at when I'm doing these live streams is I just keep talking and demoing and stuff like that. I should be saving uh, every so often so I'm gonna do that now. Hopefully um, you do that also. So I'm gonna come in here and hit save. Um, it's in the correct location. I'm just gonna call this bracket part. Actually I'm sorry, frame. <laughs> frame part and save it. Okay, so now we're gonna see that go from version zero to uh, version one uh, once it's saved, and there we go. So you should save often. Now I wanna put a hole here. Now you're saying, well, why didn't you do it at the same time? Well, because they're actually two different sizes, and you can actually see that kind of in this 3D view, a larger hole here and a smaller hole with a keyway that goes through it. So the smaller hole is a 5H ream. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'll click on that face. I'll use the hole command out of my marking menu, or I could get it from my create menu, but I'm just gonna do that. And you'll notice it's kind of off to the side. All I have to do is grab it. You can see that little blue dot. I'm just gonna get it near that blue dot and it's gonna snap right in place. What's the diameter? Well, in this case, it's 5 eighths, and so you'll see Sure enough, the preview is smaller than that one. And how far do I need it to machine? Well, I'm just gonna click on that face and say, okay. There we go. And then finally, the hole through the bottom. So I'm gonna repeat my last command. I'll just click kind of off to the side on that face. Notice it remembers my last um, dimension, which is great, the 5 eighths. So I'm just gonna drag this down to that point. And in this case, they are both the same size. So I can drag this and click on that face and have it drill all the way through in this example. I'll say okay. 
Okay, looking at the drawing, um, there's a whole bunch of blends or fillets on this I-beam part. And like I mentioned before, I kept my um, sketch very simple. I didn't do all of these fillets in my sketch. I just did you know, sharp corners, extruded it, and now I'm gonna use 3D fillets to round over these edges. Okay, so let's do that. We can see that um, the, the edges are 3 32nd, and then the rest of them are 1 8th. So I'm going to do the 3 30 seconds first. So let's just go ahead and click on an edge, right mouse click, and it shows me the commands that make sense, fillet or chamfer. I'll go ahead and say fillet. And again, I'm really bad at math, so I'm going to type in 3 slash 32, and it figures that out for me. And then I'll just go ahead and click the rest of these edges, and you'll see it gives me a nice preview of what that's going to look like. I'll come around over here. I'll say that edge, that edge, that edge, and that edge. Say OK, and we've filleted all of those edges. OK, now there's a bunch of other edges in here that need to be filleted. OK, so I'm going to select um, one of them. I'll say fill it, and these are supposed to be uh, 1 8th, so I'll type in 1 8th. But notice how long it's going to take me to select all of these edges. I'm kind of walking around, grabbing all of these edges, and that's gonna take quite some time. So here's a neat trick. I'm gonna cancel out. <laughs> I'll come into my fillet command, and I'm just gonna draw a selection box around the whole I-beam, like so. What's the size? 0.125, and it instantly fillets all of those edges at once. I didn't have to manually click on them and hope I don't make a mistake or misclick or slip off the holding down the shift key or whatever. So hopefully you found that tip kind of cool. Um, I use that one quite a bit. Okay, and then the rest honestly is um, there's a fillet on this edge that's 0.125 and on that edge, and on this curve, and on that curve. Now you'll notice I'm selecting all four of those at the same time, and that's because they're all the same size. So instead of doing and having a whole bunch of fillet features in my timeline, I'm kind of grouping them together. So these are all my 0.125s. And then down here, I'll do a new fillet, and these are 1 16th. So I'll say that edge, that edge, that edge, and I'll just come across like so. And these are all gonna be 1 16th in radius. And there we are. We are done with the design of the frame. Now, you know, when I first looked at this, I'm like, wow, this is kind of a complex part. How am I gonna do these tapered faces and curved blends and stuff like that. So I tried to break it down into its simplest form. And like I said, there's probably other ways you could make this part. Um, so when you give this a try, if you make it a different way, let me know. Make, like, leave a comment you know, on the, uh, the YouTube video um, at a later date and say how you went about doing it because I'd, I'd love to learn other ways. Okay, so I'm gonna save, obviously, because we're finished and I'm gonna say, oh, finished frame. And the next thing I want to do is to create the bracket that's going to go in between this frame. And this is where the in context starts to come into play. So right now, my frame is my active component. Well, I want to activate this. And I shouldn't have called it frame part. It's actually, we're doing the whole design. So I'll rename that later. Uh, but I'm going to activate my top level assembly. I'll come in here and say new component. And the new component is going to be the bracket. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And you'll notice that the frame kind of ghosts out a little bit. Let me go ahead and minimize all this stuff. And you'll notice that we have the, um, 
frame component, and now we have this bracket component with nothing underneath it. Okay, so let me jump to the drawing. We'll jump over to the bracket drawing. Let me, uh, so we can kind of see pretty simple shape, kind of triangulated. Um, the, the holes are three inches apart. We kind of know that these arms are half inch wide. Um, and we know about the size of the holes. So what I'm going to do is start by creating an offset plane. Now, why am I doing this? Well, the bottom of the bracket sits about an inch and a quarter below these holes. And I know that the, this plane right here is slicing right through the middle of those holes. So I'm going to offset that plane down. I can see in the negative direction. So I'm going to type in minus one and a quarter or 1.25. And I now have a piece of paper that's sitting an inch and a quarter below the center of these holes. And I'll sketch on that plane. So I'm just going to select it and say create sketch. You can kind of see my uh, screen reoriented, but let me rotate a little bit. When we can see that we now have a piece of paper below that frame. And that's what we're going to use. Now I want to grab information from this frame. So again, I'm going to use the project command. But notice what happens when I hover over the body. It's kind of like I mentioned before, it's kind of doing a silhouette projection if the body option is selected. So you can kind of see it looks like a little barbell or dog bone or something like that. I'm going to change to specified entities and now you can see I can actually specify what do I want to project. Okay, now I've kind of dug myself a little bit of a hole right here because I want to go to this edge, but that edge is shorter than this edge because of the fillet. And this will make more sense here in just a moment, but I'm going to project both of those edges by selecting that fillet. I'll also project that fillet, and you can see that it's taking the information and bringing it down onto that plane. And I'll say OK. OK, the next thing I want to kind of do is kind of create the, uh, that tapered look. So I'm going to draw a line out here in space. I know it needs to be three inches long. So I just did that out there in space and it's three inches long. Now I'm doing something a little bit different that you guys probably aren't used to um, me doing. I'm usually looking at everything orthographic, right? I'm kind of looking straight down on the piece of paper. But doing this in context design, we can actually look at our piece of paper from any direction and any angle. And so I'm kind of sketching in this isometric mode. Okay, now I want to put this centered, so I'm going to say midpoint that line to that point, and you'll see that it took the line that's three inches long and it put it right in the center. And because it's constrained, I can tell because it's no longer blue. Now I don't want this to be an object line, so I'm going to click on it and hit the construction icon over here and you can see that it turned it to a dashed line. Now I you know this might be confusing to some people but I am actually old enough that I learned drafting on a drafting board where you drew light pencil lines that kind of got your shape the way you wanted and then you would come back and use a harder pencil or or ink even and trace over those. Well those light pencil lines were what we called construction lines. And then we went over and traced them, and those were the object lines. And it's the exact same thing in Fusion. We've got construction lines, and we've got object lines. Okay, so now I can throw my circles on here. And here's another tip. According to the drawing, it's asking for a half inch radius circle. And you'll notice it's asking for a diameter right now. Well, I could do the math. So I could say, you know, 0.5 times 2 or something like that. Or I could just draw a circle. I don't care what size it is. In fact, I'll draw another circle. I'll make it even larger, like so. 
doesn't matter. Then I'll do my dimension. Oops, D for dimension. And I'll click on that and again, notice it's asking for a diameter. Well, if I right mouse click, it gives me the option to specify a radius. So you can see diameter is checked. I'm gonna click on radius and now it says R 0 0.39, 309. Well, I can come in and say, I want that to be 0.5 and it's gonna make that circle a half inch radius. I'll do the same thing here. It's currently diameter. I'll right click and say radius. I want it to be the same as that guy, so I'll just go ahead and click on it, and it's gonna be the same. It's gonna reference that for me. So that's how you can do radius size holes. Okay, the, the next thing I wanna do is um, create a line that comes over here, and this will make more sense why I had to do these two lines now. Well, I want a line to be tangent to the circle. And another tip is if you hold down your shift key when you're clicking on that circle. So I'm holding down shift and I'm holding down my left mouse button. You'll notice that this line that I'm creating is constantly staying tangent to that circle. As soon as I let go, I can let go of shift right now. Um, but if I were to place a line, you'll see that it created that tangent icon for me. Okay, so neat little trick. Instead of having to come back and do tangent, I'm just gonna hold down shift, click and hold. Now, I want to go to this distance here, but I wanna be up at the height of this other line right here. So all I have to do is get kind of near it. In fact, let me, uh, let me zoom up a little bit more before I do this because I want you to kind of see what's going on here. Let's do, let's do that. I'll say line, hold down my shift key, come across. So I need to be here, but I need to be up a little bit, but you'll notice it doesn't know how far up it needs to go. Well, all I have to do is hover for about half a second, and now you can see it's in line with that other dot, and then I'm just gonna come back here, and it's kind of hard to see because my cursor's covering it, but there's now two dashed lines, and it's basically saying you're lined up with this dot, and you're lined up with that dot, okay? So all you have to do is hover for about half a second, and then I'll just go ahead and click that. I'll do the same thing here. I'll just kind of hover and hover, then hold down my shift key as I'm moving along, and we'll see it actually kind of snap into place, boom, and you can see that little uh, tangent icon right there. Okay, so I'll do the same thing over here and I'm hoping this kind of makes sense and once we extrude, you'll see why I had to do that. But I'll go ahead and hold down my shift key again. I'll come to here, come to here, move over a little bit and we can see that we're now lined up. Same thing with that. And hold down my shift key, get near that edge and you can kind of see it snap into place. And I now have the shape of my part. I'll finish my sketch. Notice um, because these are object lines, um, I could have trimmed these back, but instead I'm just gonna select those as part of my profile also. Right mouse click, it shows me the command that makes sense. In this case, I'll say extrude. How far? 0.5 according to the drawing. So I'm gonna type in 0.5 and say okay. So let me see if I can show it from this direction. It'll be kind of hard to see, but this edge is now perfectly in line with that edge of the circle and with that edge of the circle. If I hadn't done that, they would have been lined up with this edge and this edge, which is incorrect. Okay, so now what? Well, now I wanna create these little wings, whatever tabs, if you wanna call it that but we're gonna use the 3D model to help us with our design. I did throw a dimension on here, but we're actually not even gonna use that dimension, so check this out. This is actually pretty cool. 
Okay, I'm going to create a new sketch. Because it's symmetric, I'm going to click on this kind of this horizontal or uh, this right side plane right there. So we're slicing through the center of our parts right there. And I'm going to use our favorite command, the project command. So I'll say project. Now I could do the whole body, but I don't want to in this case. I want to be very specific. So I'm going to say specified entities. And notice as I move around how it's trying to project these faces and edges and stuff onto that piece of paper that's slicing right through the middle. Well, I want to grab this outside edge. So I'm going to click on that edge and you can see how it projected it. Well, I also want to know how far down I need to go. So I'm actually going to project the face of this part. And this is what I think is so cool. We're actually grabbing information from one component and grabbing information from a second component to help us with our design. I need to create some vertical walls here. You could do this many different ways. I find using the rectangle command pretty fast. And again, I'm going to over exaggerate my rectangle. So it'll look something like that. Okay, but I was careful to make sure it kind of snapped to that bottom line, which it did. Well, I want this line to be tangent to the circle. So I'll say tangent that line to that circle and you'll see how that moves over. I'll say that line to that circle and we can see how that moves over. But I got a bunch of extra garbage up here. I want this line to be at the same level as this center line. So I'm going to use coincident. Coincident means they need to occupy the same space. So I'm going to say that line and that point, and you'll see how that line now occupies that point. And we have really nice straight lines. Everything is um, no longer blue, so we know that it's fully constrained. And I'm going to say finish my sketch. Again, I could have trimmed, I could have done construction lines if I wanted to. It's really up to you. But I'm just going to select those three regions, right mouse click and say extrude. I start to drag so I get kind of a visual picture of what it's going to look like. Well, how far do I need to go? Well, instead of typing in a dimension, I can actually hover over this face right here. And you'll notice it says snap to. I'm just going to click on that face. And you'll notice that it extrudes to that face. I could also come in here and say symmetric and it's going to go symmetrically both ways. So again, instead of having to type in distances and whole lengths and all that kind of stuff, all I did was click on existing geometry to help define the width of that part. Okay, now I want to um, make those little standoffs or whatever, but this is one big solid chunk. Here's another neat little tip. I want to work on just the bracket and the frame is kind of in the way now. I've used it as much as I need to in this case, so I don't want to see it anymore. So I could right mouse click on bracket and say isolate. And it would turn off all of my other components and it isolates and just displays this one. So you can see, sure enough, it turned off my frame. Okay, so again, keeping things simple, I'm gonna say create a sketch on this plane right here. If I try and create a line or a rectangle, you'll notice it's not snapping to this edge right here. So I need to project that. So I'm going to come in here and say project. I'll rotate it isometrically so you can kind of see what's going on here. I'm going to project that face or I could do an edge. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to do the whole face. Say OK. Now notice when I do my rectangle command, it is snapping to that projected edge. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a rectangle here, something like this. doesn't matter what size. I'll throw a dimension on here. I'll say from here to here. 
needs to be a 0.5 according to the drawing and same thing here to here and I'll click on this existing dimension instead of having to type it in I'll just click on that one say okay and it's referencing it so now it's basically centered if you want to look at it that way we'll grab that profile extrude you can see as I start to extrude it kind of cuts that away well I want it to go instead of a distance let's just extrude through um, all of it symmetrically so it's extruding as far as it needs to go through the model so I changed that to symmetric to make it go both directions and I changed the extent from a distance to all and we'll say okay there we go again I'm gonna use my favorite hole command so I'll say hole click off to the side a little bit drag that down where it needs to go and kind of automatically snaps right to the center of that radius and to me this is so much faster than typing in dimensions and projecting faces and creating more sketches or whatever these are supposed to be a half inch so I'm going to type in 0.5 how far does it need to go well I could do just one side if I wanted to or I can drag and have it go all the way through do both holes at the same time in one feature and then the last thing with this and we're just at the top of the hour so um, there's lots of blends that kind of knock all the sharp edges on this so I'm gonna go ahead and do those according to the drawing so I'll select one edge right mouse click and again it shows me the the two commands that make sense in this case fill it and you'll notice that when I type it in it actually goes all the way around even though I only clicked one edge it went all the way around and that's because of this tangent chain command what that means is if I have an edge selected is there another edge tangent to it yes there is okay go ahead and select it is there another edge tangent to that yes there is go ahead and select that edge now this one is not tangent to it it comes at a sharp angle so that's why it's only selecting those three edges okay now I could come in here and select all of these other edges but that would take quite a few clicks so check this out I'm gonna just say okay on those two edge loops that we selected I'll hit F for fillet again but instead of selecting edges I'm gonna select this face I'll type in 0.125 and watch what happens it selected all of the edges of that face for me so saving quite a bit of time I'll say okay let's go ahead and save and I could come in here and say uh, finished uh, bracket we'll turn the frame back on and again here is one of the reasons I really like using components is you'll notice my bracket component is active right now these are all of the steps that were necessary to create that bracket not very many if I were to activate the frame here's all of the steps that were necessary to create that frame and you'll kind of notice I sort of grouped things together I kind of waited and did all my fillets to the end I kind of did all my holes together and I've seen this question a couple times so let me go ahead and cover this I'm gonna select all four of those fillets features right mouse click and you can see we can create a group and you'll notice that it's now a single icon and if I hover over it it shows all of the features that are inside of that group and I could expand that open to see them or I could minimize them but my favorite thing is you can rename it so I'm gonna right click and say rename and I could call this um, small fillets or something like that okay I could group these together and I could rename that and say 
main holes or whatever and I could I could even give dimensions or something like that but now when I hover over this group I can see oh those are all my small fillets these are all my main holes you can actually rename anything you see in here so for example right here I could rename this guy and call it you know hole sketch and as I'm going through, like this one just says sketch two, but now when I hover over this, I know that that's the sketch that kind of defines the holes, or the cylinders, I should say. So kind of a cool tip there that you can actually rename anything in your timeline and you can group them together. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and activate my top level assembly, and now we can see all of the features that were used to create um, these two components, which in reality, I think this is actually pretty clean. It did not take a whole bunch of steps to create these. Let's for fun come in here and do a section analysis. I'm gonna use my origin here. Let's cut right through there and we can visually see, you know, solid objects and that these are touching perfectly right there. And you'll see, we're gonna create the screw that's gonna go in here and thread into this section so we can visually see the different size holes and everything. Okay, so like I mentioned, this is um, part one of a multi-part series. I'm gonna continue creating the rest of these parts um, in context. We're gonna use the 3D geometry to help us with our design. So hopefully you learned something new today. Um, make sure you uh, subscribe. Uh, keep an eye out for the, those other um, live streams. We're actually doing a ton of live streams. Uh, Jason's doing a bunch. We, Aaron's doing some. Um, uh, Angelo, our machinist, has been doing a bunch. So it'll probably be about another two weeks or so before I can actually have a free time slot to do this next one. Um, but make sure you subscribe. And uh, we'd love to see your comments. And hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.